Marissa Martin, thank you for joining us here on Channel Vision. No worries. Marissa, let's start with Marissa. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about your history and uh, to where you are today. Oh, goodness. Okay, um, born and raised in Canberra, so mm -hmm. been a Canberra girl my whole life. And, um, oh, no, well, not technically. Moved out to Bungendore when I was 14. Uh, my parents moved me out there and I cursed them for it. But, uh, no, no, Bungendore's a lovely place. And um, so I live in Queanbeyan now, a little bit between Bungendore and Canberra. And um, I have had a love of movies my whole life. You know, my mum was really into the movies and we used to watch a lot of films. And um, that was pretty much, you know, the thing to do when you were not, had nothing else to do when I was a kid. So, um, really love watching movies so when I got to choosing my career path you know from college and such um, I really wanted to pursue making films and um, so that's what I did I, um, I did a communications degree at the University of Canberra and um, and then started my own business so kind of producing short films and music videos and corporate films and commercials and, and things like that so um, kind of just built it from there these days I'm specializing in animation I've got this love of animation I didn't know I had so uh, that's been really fun for the last couple of years mm. and um, that's sort of where I've been focusing uh, my my training myself and you know building my skills and such yeah so uh, a love for movies and so forth and you mentioned your mother earlier but uh, who, who is it that had the most impact on you for uh, developing that career path um, well, I mean, my parents were really supportive of my wanting a creative career, which is um, really important, you know, uh, allowed me to, to pursue a career that potentially might not have a great deal of income, <laughs> you know, it's really good of them. Um, actually, moving to, moving to Bungendore when I was 14 and being a really shy girl, I think that meant that I spent a lot of time watching movies. I really did spend a lot of time watching films. So um, I was reading books about cinema and the important films that, you know, that everyone talked about, the Hitchcock films, the Kubrick films. Um, and I would seek them out, like the, the video store knew me, <laughs> you know, I'd be like, do you have this, do you have that? And, um, and so I watched a lot of films when I was a teenager because I didn't know quite what else to do in a small country town. So um, that was a, a big part of it was mum encouraging me to do it. And they, they also bought me a, a camera when I was uh, about 14. And so I was able to make my own little things as well. So they were really supportive, both my parents and yeah. that and coupled with a, you know, a, a film education that I had sort of, you know, um, orchestrated myself. Uh, was, um, were big parts of, of wanting to become a filmmaker. Okay, well let, let's talk um, Enemies of Reality, mm -hmm. EOR Media, yeah. which is obviously one of the businesses I believe you set up. Mm -hmm. Now that's a very proactive business in relation to the industry and getting information out to other practitioners in the industry or people wishing to start. Tell us a little bit about EO, EOR. Um, well, I started that pretty much straight out of university. Um, I'd made a few films that had um, won a couple of awards and just short films, and that had garnered us some attention, um, which meant that we were able to get some corporate work. So, of course, we set up a business so that we could do, you know, a few little corporate videos here and there. Um, but I'm... Um, I don't know why, but I am quite community minded, you know, about building a community here. Um, and I had already started running film festivals um, because when I was in university, I was making these films that I was so proud of and there was nowhere really to screen them. There was, um, I think, one short film festival in Canberra at the time and, um, and you know, it was hard to get into. So it was about, you know, creating a, um, an event, which is what Short Seasons um, was. Um, it was actually created by a guy called Josh Garrett who asked me to help him run it and then he got a job in Queensland so I ended up running the first one. Um, but that's been running since 2001 and it's about getting a screening opportunity for people in Canberra who otherwise might not make those national festivals. Short Seasons Film Festival is back with Short Seasons Spring, Friday 26th of October 7pm, entry is free because seeing your film in front of an audience is really important um, as a filmmaker because it, it teaches you a lot. <laughs> it teaches you an awful lot about ensuring that your work is you know, up to a really good standard and that you don't cringe when you watch a film and knowing that um, just because you like it doesn't mean that it needs to be in the film and it has to make sense and be cohesive to its, itself. So um, screening opportunities were, I considered extremely important. So running short seasons was really um, 
a big thing that I started doing. Um, and then we were asked to run the, um, the Canberra Short Film Festival as well, which is competitive national competition. And um, so a much larger operation than Short Seasons, but um, certainly as important uh, in terms of getting Canberran content on screens. <gasps> my birthday party next week. <laughs> Talk us through the story of Tegan, where it started and, and what it's done for you so far. Um, well, Tegan the Vegan, I started thinking about, I think in probably 2000 and, uh, Six, 2006, 2007, so a long time ago, um, and she's still she's still getting screened and stuff. So it's a really long process for it for a short film. Um, and I had made a bunch of films and I'd had some success with them, and um, but I wanted to make it into um, top tier festivals. I wanted to be getting into the Flickerfest and the St Kilda's and those festivals that would um, get me more uh, acclaim, you know, and put me on the radar for Screen Australia and, and people like that. So um, I wanted to get, you know, that extra step. And running the film festivals, I'd seen so many short films and I realised that the films that were the most, um, the, that that cut through the most were the ones that were about personal experience and that were really honest and true and kind of, um, came from somewhere, you know, so I thought about what is it that I want to say to the world um, and I'm vegetarian so that was really important to me. Um, so I started writing this script and um, and I thought well it's got to be a comedy otherwise people are going to hate this rant, this you know, <laughs> vegan rant. Um, so you know, and I, you know, I made her vegan because it rhymes better and um, I made her really cute and um, because I wanted people to love her even if they don't agree with what she's you know, even if they've got person, different personal choices, I still wanted them to love her. So making her cute was really important. And then I started thinking, well, I think she probably has to be animated. And I'd never done animation before. So it was like, oh, God, OK, I'm going to have to figure out how to do this. Um, it was about a six month shoot. Um, three to four days a week with three of us um, in the studio, six month shoot, and you know, which is a long time. <laughs> you know, moving, doing 10 seconds a day, mm. moving her little arms and um, taking a photo, move them again, take a photo. So it's, an, it's a tedious process, but it's magical. You know, you watch it at the end of the day and you're like, oh my God, she's alive. Oh, I won't have half your sandwich today. But we always share our lunch. I'm vegan now. Vegan? What's that? Vegan? Doesn't that mean you're an alien from planet Vega? You know, the evil planet vegetables come from? No, it means she won't, like, eat anything with the shadow. Tegan. The vegan. She had a world premiere, international premiere in New York City, which was fantastic at the New York City International Film Festival. Um, so I went to that, why not? <laughs> and that was, um, that was fabulous. So seeing Tegan on the big screen in Times Square was just amazing, really, really amazing. And um, she's screened all over the world now. She's screened um, in Germany and Brussels and Belgium and um, as well as, you know, Canada and North America and, and all over Australia, of course. So um, we're very proud of Tegan having got that far. Yeah, so she's been really... Um, really important in developing me as an artist. You know, I'd never done animation before, so um, in that regard, having as much success of, as we've had with it has really cemented why I love animation and why I love the design and, uh, you know, making the little sets and doing all that kind of stuff. Because when I was a teenager, I remember reading all the special effects books and, you know, how they do miniatures for all the effects. And I really wanted to do that, but CG took over. Mm. So they don't really do that in movies anymore. Mm. Um, so that, but they do that for animation. Mm. And um, so oh, it's just so much fun building yeah. little sets, making tiny little pots of glue and tiny little plates. And, you know, yeah, it's fun. Um, and and it, you know, creating an entire world is, is, is magical. Okay, let's talk uh, grizzly bears. Okay, yes, <laughs> grizzly bear. Well, grizzly bear is quite different, actually. Mm. I made grizzly bear over Christmas. Um, we'd taken a break from our, a, a big project we were doing and, um, and we just thought, oh, what are we going to do with our holidays? Let's make a film. 
we're hopeless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't stop working for two seconds. Yeah. Um, so on Christmas afternoon, um, you know, I sat down with my mum and we sort of nutted out what we wanted. And, um, you know, I had my family there, so they voice all the characters. Mm. Um, so we recorded them in the afternoon and because uh, we do voice recording first. And then we um, just started animating. So between Christmas and New Year, we, uh, we nutted out this little three minute film about a homicidal teddy bear. <laughs> Hey, you okay? Yeah, I just tripped on something. It was an idea I've had for a long time um, that I just never really got around to to making. Um, it's about a uh, a teddy bear who is, you know, the beloved, you know, most beloved best friend of this girl. You're my favorite friend. When she grows up, of course, she moves on to, you know, boyfriends and the teddy bear is pushed out of the picture. The teddy bear's not real happy about that. And uh, starts to take, you know, revenge. Um, so it's, yeah, I, I had the idea after a, um, a breakup when I went and got my teddy bear that had been put in the cupboard. And I, you know, I just cuddled him, you know, when I went to bed that night and I went, oh, you poor teddy, you must yeah. hate me yeah. <laughs> for putting you away. Now I've brought you out. Yeah. And um, so this teddy bear inspired the whole story. I kind of imagined what, you know, what he would think and, mm. and, um, and all that. This teddy bear I've had since I was five. And so, yeah, I mean, it came from, came from there. And I'd also been reading a bunch of um, comic books by, um, by female authors who had a really strong black and white monochromatic kind of style. It's all black and white with spot colour and I was like, oh, I really want to try that style of animation. And um, so that's what we did. All the backgrounds are all black and white with, you know, a uh, real focus on shadow, um, a bit film noir with, you know, sl you know slices of light. Um, you know, it is a dark comedy. So, you know, it's kind of funny to see a teddy bear going with a slash of light across his <laughs> eyes. Um, yeah, so that was uh, that was kind of the inspiration for that. You know, so the teddy bear is blue, and pretty much everything else is is um, black and white. Big project at the moment, the. Delamort sisters. Mm -hmm. Give us a little insight into, into that project and what you hope to achieve with that project. Okay, so the Delamort sisters is a uh, steampunk animation for children. Um, and if you don't know what steampunk is, you've got to Google it because it's this most amazingly beautiful um, style of sort of retro futurism. Um, and it's, it's really elegant and beautiful and um, really imaginative and adventurous. So uh, that's sort of what the, the story is about three girls who, um, whose parents are missing and um, how they try to find their parents. Um, and we just started making a, a short film. Um, we got some arts funding for that and we were just making a little short film and happy to just do that. And then uh, Screen ACT came up with this idea called Project Pod um, and they, um, which was to take a project to uh, either a TV series or a feature and we thought, oh, well, why not? So we did, the, we did Project Pod and we ended up going through the entire process, being selected along the way and, and winning a grant at the end um, to develop what was our short film into a, a TV series. So, um, which is the biggest thing I've ever imagined in my life. Um, you know, going through, you know, full season arcs and, you know, what happens at what episode and, and sort of really imagining the entire world and developing the characters and all that kind of thing. Um, from there we were, um, we entered the Holding Redlick Pitching Competition, which is an annual pitching competition held at SPA um, every year, which is the Screen Producers Association of Australia's conference. Um, so in front of like 600 of Australia's producers and networks, I get up, which is just nuts. I get up and I just go, this is my idea. I really want to make this TV series, rah, rah, rah. And I just show them a trailer and, and what have you. Um, we managed to, to win that, which is just amazing, um, which means that um, they're paying for us to 
to go to take it to Cannes, which is a Cannes in France, um, where they hold a big TV film, you know, screen content conference called MIPCOM. Um, and that's in two weeks' time. <laughs> so I'll be heading off to, to Cannes with our girls and our ideas and we'll just see what happens. You know, we're going to meet with lots of people, lots of networks and um, sales agents and all kinds of words I've just learnt. Um, so we're going to see what happens and hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, something amazing happens um, and somebody loves the idea and picks it up and um, it might happen. But worst comes to worst, I get to hang out in the French Riviera for a week. So, you know, <laughs> that's not too bad either. Pretty happy with that. Were you not? A filmmaker, if you yeah. weren't in this creative industry, what, what do you think you'd be doing? Oh, goodness. I've never thought about it because I've never thought of doing anything else. Mm. I'd probably do interior design or, or something. It'd still be creative. I don't think I could, you know, um, do something not creative. I mean, I tried to study law and I just didn't like it. I still passed, but I didn't like it. Um, you know, so I think for me, a creative life is, is absolutely what I have to do. Um, I don't think I'm really built for much else. <laughs> so it would, be, it would still be creative. It would be making things with my hands. It would be making toys or it would be, you know, designing spaces or, or something like that. It would be still very visually creative because I just don't think I could do anything else. I just couldn't do it. You know, this is, I absolutely love what I do and you know you know um, you know we were talking before about how sometimes it's a little bit here and a little bit there and a pocket of money here and a pocket of money there and you've just kind of kind of um, make that work um, you know and I have other jobs and um, that, that fill in those those gaps but for me it's um, being creative is it, it's more than just a, something I want to do I have to do it it's a need it's a you know I cannot do something else so um, really I don't think I could, it'd be this. <laughs> it would still be this somehow. It would still be this. Storytelling is just in my blood, I think, and it's just going to always be there. That's great. Marissa, yeah. lovely to talk to you. All the very, very super best <laughs> with everything that you've got on your plate. And it's always a pleasure having you on Channel Thank you, Stephen. Thank you very much.